it's fantastic to see you all here. Very, very warm welcome to all of you. And, um, and uh, in particular, a very warm welcome to our speakers. And thank you very much indeed for coming. Uh, Andrew and Dominic are here. Um, tr I'm sure Tracy, Ann will, tr Tracy Jane will turn up. And Anna, who's come from Northampton LMC, is here uh, seeing what we're up to as well. So um, warm welcome to you, Anna, as well. Um, some housekeeping to start with. We're not expecting a fire alarm to go off. Um, and I knew there was something else I was supposed to do when I arrived this morning, and that's to find out where the, uh, uh, the assembly point is. But there are several fire escape notices, one there, and I think there's another one around the corner here. So please um, follow the fire escape arrows should a fire alarm go off. <clears throat> um, in your delegate packs, which we painstakingly put in in order so that it makes it really easy for you to follow and you all turn up and take everything out and have a good rummage through and put it all out of order but that's you know that's par for the course but in the back of it you will see that there's an evaluation pack and it really helps us enormously if you fill your evaluation pack evaluation form out before you leave so that we can really make sure that we give you the courses and the seminars and the conferences that you really want um, Everything that you say will be taken down and used in evidence against you. <clears throat> Tony over here is recording this conference so that if you want to show it to some more of your staff, you can when you get back to the surgery, or you can encourage some of the people that don't turn up to look at it. Um, I have this horrible feeling that the best practice managers turn up to these kind of conferences and the ones we really, really would like to get to know better and really encourage to, to, to move forward. Um, either feel too shy to turn up or don't, don't feel they have the time to come along. Um, so if you can encourage them to look at this on our website, it doesn't go on to a public website, it only goes on to uh, our login side of our website, so, uh, so it is confidential. So if you do say anything a bit outrageous, the public doesn't see it uh, when you start saying how awful patients are. <clears throat> Please do turn off your mobile phones, and you know what it's like, the one person that doesn't turn the mobile phone off is the speaker. I'd better just check mine, because I've had to leave it on this morning. Um, and of course, finally, I want to thank a lot of people, um, Luton, whose staff, Simon over there, who's doing the, uh, the, the video stuff for us, and Tony, who's actually recording this, um, and the, the rest of the staff of the catering staff and everybody who, who always help us when we come here, which is why we're attracted to come back again. But of course, a very, very big thank you go to my LMC staff who put a huge amount of work into making sure that conference like, conferences like this run uh, to clockwork. The one thing they can't do is make sure the speakers turn up. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so... Oh, and just of course a final thank you to our sponsors, and please do get round to speak to them. We specially pick the sponsors to make sure that there is something that they can offer you, and most of them are, in fact I think all of them, are in our portfolio of, uh, of recommended consultants or recommended providers, um, and can indeed offer you the best possible uh, deals uh, if you have any need for any of those things, and things like untied. Utilities has done some fantastic work in reducing utility bills for practices um, and obviously office supplies, WG and, and Williams always offer us extremely good deals on the everyday things that you use. So please do speak to our sponsors. So, into the nitty gritty. What's it like at the moment? Well, look, today we've divided the day deliberately into two parts. The first part is to concentrate on the things that are going to affect you in the very near future. We're hoping Tracy Jane Norton will be here to talk about CQC and the CQC inspection. Um, we've got Neil Bacon turning up who's going to talk to you about www.iwantgreatcare.com and the friends and family test and hopefully inspire you to put, make the most of the friends and family test. After coffee if we haven't had to juggle things around. Uh, we have, um, we're pleased that Dominic Cox, the uh, Director of Commissioning from uh, NHS England's Hertfordshire and South Midlands area team is here to speak to you about the aspirations of NHS England for the future of general practice. And, and Andrew, brave man that he is, is going to talk to you about where we are with the dreaded CQRS. <clears throat> um, 
This afternoon, we're then going to focus much more on you and giving you some tools to go back to your practices and to make some real differences and changes. And then in the afternoon, we're going to talk about trust. And that's particularly pertinent when you think that we are encouraging you to start talking to your local colleagues and practices. Um, I, I believe my... My stress levels have just reduced enormously. Welcome, Tracy J. I'm really pleased to see you. Um, uh, we're going to talk about trust as a mechanism of improving and getting um, innovation. And, uh, and as you work with local practices and begin to trust them, we're hoping that we can really improve patient care and patient services. And that's the second part of this afternoon. I, I've lost count of how many times I've shown this photograph because I have a feeling it kind of rings bells and resonates with you all. This sort of muddy, boggy picture, deep uh, puddles, but somewhere out there it's a bit greener. And it is possible to get there, but it's really difficult to know how to do so. But there are three messages I want you to take home with you today. The first one is that if you don't forge your own future, there is someone out there that's going to do it for you. That I know things are difficult, but there are some fantastic opportunities to be had, and it's really there for the taking, and you must grasp them. And finally, if you can achieve those two, then general practice is sustainable and successful for the long-term future. But I guess when I was looking at this and thinking about what I was going to say today, I, I envisaged you guys uh, chuckling. It, it obviously, again, strikes a chord of, of this chap juggling these huge balls in the air. He, uh, you notice I was careful when I said that, he... Um, <laughs> He's actually the world record holder for juggling balls, and I think this guy, he works for Cirque du Soleil, or he certainly did at one time, um, can apparently juggle nine balls in the air at once, which is some feat, um, but it's nothing to what you do. I started thinking about all the balls that you are juggling in the air at any one time, and I came up with quite a long list, and it just starts with the contract changes for 2014-15, avoiding unplanned emissions dares. I mean, that must be a huge load on you at this very early time in the year. Name GP over 75s, for the over 75s, out of hours monitoring. IT changes, how many of you have actually got your Skype consultations set up already? I suspect it's not too many. Um, online booking, prescription requests, Summary care record is an absolute must-do now. GP to GP transfer, just to name a couple of the IT things you've got to sort out. Then there's the friends and family test later in the year. Finally, you've got the choice of GP scenario, debacle, still hanging over you. And all that, you've got financial pressures within the practice, you've got to engage with the CCG, you've got performance management by the area team, you are juggling with HR issues, not to mention a clinical, a clinical staff recruitment crisis. How many of you are having trouble getting locums, let alone a, a partner? Patient demand is increasing, expectations from government is increasing, and the list goes on. And to cap it all, you are judged by your last quaff results, you are judged by the last complaint that you had into the practice, you are judged by the last headline in the Daily Mail. So it really isn't surprising that stress levels in general practice and amongst practice managers as well as GPs is pretty high. It must be very demoralising. But at this point in my talk, I want to try an experiment out. In a moment, I want you to all stand up, and I want you to clap and cheer and whistle and do whatever you like. I want you to pretend that it's not me on the stage here, that it's your favourite artist, your favourite singer, your favourite dancer, whatever. I don't care who it is. They have just completed the most amazing performance, and you think it's fantastic. So let's go for it. A really big clap. Come on. Well done. Well done. Well done. 
Now, that's given you some energy. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it's, the, it's the first time I've ever had a standing ovation. Now, that was not for me. That was for you. That was for you. There is an incredibly different story to all this stuff. An incredibly different story to all the moaning and whinging. And I've got just a few statistics. These statistics were taken from the 2011, I've got to read it because I can't remember it, Commonwealth Fund International Health Policy Survey of Sicker Adults. And this is what it showed. It looked at 11 different countries, and they're all, they've all got very comparable health systems to ours. The UK spends the second lowest amount per capita on health. It spends the second lowest proportion of GDP of all these 11 countries. In fact, there was a BMJ article last week that said it's lower than 9.6%, and we are second only to Italy, who spends less proportion of its GDP than we do on health in this country. New Zealand is, is only lower in terms of per capita, and the $3,000 actually equates to around about £2,000. If you actually do a, 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 an exchange rate today, that $3,000 drops down to, to less than £1,800, but it's about £2,000 per capita. <coughs> if you look at this, the cost-related access problems in the past year, we have the lowest statistic of patients that don't fill out, they get their prescriptions completed. They have the lowest number that have a medical problem and unable to visit their doctor. The lowest number that skipped t treatments or tests or follow-up. In other words, our patients don't waste their resources. And what's more, they do trust what we in general practice tell them about what they need to do in order to improve their own health. Seventy-nine percent of patients were able to get a same-day appointment with a doctor, the highest value and equal only to Switzerland, seventy-nine percent same day, and less than two percent were unable to get a, an appointment within six days. The UK was the lowest with regard to the difficulty in accessing out-of-hours care without going to an emergency, emergency room. And UK had the best statistics when it came to actually patients being able to access out-of-hours care. And the statistics actually go on. I've got a load more. You'll see that 69% of patients actually were fully involved in their care with their doctor, the highest in all of these countries. And these statistics go on. Clinical outcomes are as good as anywhere of these 11 countries. And what's more, if you read this report, Improving General Practice, A Call to Action, this report from government, which came out in March, actually admits that 86% of patients, 86% say you're good or you're very good. It, unfortunately, it focuses also on the 26% that have difficulty in accessing, but it doesn't focus highly enough on that 86%. To crown it all, GP, UK GPs and UK practices receive the maximum amount across the world of, of performance management information, and we get a constant barrage of negative press and moaning from, from the government. But I would say that if you can juggle all those balls in the air and you can deliver a service at that level, then not only do you deserve a standing ovation, but you also deserve to be, in CQC's words, considered outstanding because that is a fantastic record, and you guys do that while you're juggling all those balls in the air. It's you, the practice managers, that keep this show on the road to produce those statistics. So you do deserve that standing ovation. Unfortunately, of course, we can't be complacent. There is always room for improvement, and 
I know Rachel and Carl have got a sweepstake on this. They knew that I would say it somewhere along the line. Standing still is not an option. We do have to carry on moving in order to carry on finding the improvements that we can. But the argument I'm saying is that if you're able to produce those kind of statistics and you can juggle all those balls in the air at once, then there is no doubt whatsoever you have the skills to forge your own futures and you have the skills to grasp the opportunities. But you need to have a very, very clear vision and that clear vision must have the quality of patient services at the heart of it and you all know that. This report has five very clear ambitions, and I'm sure Dominic's going to talk a bit more about them. They are proactive, coordinated care, holistic, person-centred care, fast, responsive access to care, health-promoting care, and consistently high-quality care. I would maintain that every single one of you in this room, and probably those that aren't in the room, go to work aiming to deliver these every single day. And that's important to remember. These aren't new. These are what we've been saying we've been trying to pr produce, despite all the difficulties that you have, despite going through the muddy puddles of, of bureaucracy, box ticking, chasing up people that just don't seem to have efficient systems. You actually are already doing your utmost to deliver, so none of this is new. But within that call to action, there are a lot of opportunities and there are a lot of, of chances for you to put these into practice. And one of those, I would argue, is co-commissioning. Co-commissioning, for those of you that haven't heard the term before, is all about working, with your, your, with the, working between the CCG and the area team to deliver primary care services in its widest term. Co-commissioning is about working, finding alternative streams of income for your practices through the CCG and not necessarily relying totally and wholly on your GMS or your PMS contract. So the real challenge isn't so much delivering services, it's about how you persuade your CCG to really invest in your service and make sure that you can get hold of the resources that are available. I believe that the sprouts of the, the, the new shoots of spring are beginning to show that there is certainly room for investment in general practice and the money is there. It's just we have got to find ways of getting hold of it. Despite all my scepticism and uh, political spin about, about what's in this paper, we do find that the tide is slowly turning and that we can improve general practice in the way that we want to. And I think a lot of that will be collaborative working with other practices, working in a much more integrated way, working with the voluntary sector to, to uh, get hold of their unique skills, working with community and social services so that we really do deliver a better, more integrated care service for our patients. And I'm sure we all want that in our hearts. And I do honestly believe that most practice managers have the skills and the knowledge of how to forge the future of their practices, provided they can persuade their bosses to get on board as well. And that's a big challenge for you, I understand. So following on from our conference last year, where we gave a lot of examples of really good work that's going on around the country, um, I want to really see a future with, of optimism that you can begin to forge yourself in a way that ends up with much better outcomes for your patients. So. Those three messages again, I'm really hoping you'll take those home today, especially when you're, you're helped this afternoon with new tools to in, increase, uh, uh, improve innovation within your practices and to help your morale and help the morale of your practices to start forging your own future. Don't let the opportunity slip away and make sure that general practice is sustainable so that instead of that muddy path, you have a picture that looks far more like that for your future. Thank you very much.